Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. Plato has Socrates speak at many points in different dialogues about the nature of life and death and how we should understand them, how we should evaluate them, what weight we ought to give considerations of danger, fear, life and death when it comes to moral decision making, figuring out the larger structure of our life, all those sorts of big picture questions. And in the Apology, he has Socrates talk at several points about why it is that, that he's not afraid to die. And this makes great sense because he's on trial for his life. Actually, some of that is not the best approach rhetorically, unless, his, unless he already sort of knows that they're probably going to convict him and he wants to make some points. Because he does say at a few points, you know, you guys in the audience, you might actually bring your kids out and have them cry and try to sway the, the jury's opinions. I'm not going to do that kind of thing because I'm not actually afraid of death. You guys who are afraid of death, there's something wrong with your thinking about this. That's not going to win over anybody, but it does make some really important points. Now you notice that I've got on the board here, there are some things that we know are bad. And so Socrates is going to talk about that. When we're doing moral decision making or when we're talking about matters of life and death, we need to know how much weight to give each consideration. And so some things we actually, Socrates says, some things we actually do have knowledge about when it comes to moral matters. I know that in parts of this dialogue it kind of sounds as if he's wise because he knows that he doesn't know anything, but he does say, I do know some things. And those things tend to be these moral matters that he'll repeat over and over again. The other thing that goes into this is, according to Socrates, you know, thus, really, perhaps according to Plato, we don't really know what death is, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, you could say that, you know, Socrates is, is sort of preaching to the audience that he's got at the time, because he does, in fact, in other dialogues, talk about, you know, um, life after death, life before death, so presumably he, he actually does endorse one of these options. But when he's talking to the members of the jury, particularly after they've convicted him and the people who convicted him have left and the other people who voted for him are still there and are pretty upset, he brings out these considerations. So this comes up early on though. He says one reason why we shouldn't be afraid of death, one reason why I'm not afraid of death, is because that would be pretending to have wisdom that I don't actually have. Now you can say that the, the human body has a sort of natural fear of pain, of destruction, of sickness, of violence, and therefore of, of death, but we don't know whether the body's impulses, the body's sort of unconscious or instinctual evaluations are actually on track. And if part of what it means to be a human being is to be able to decide for oneself, to think things through for oneself, then if we don't really know what death is, strictly speaking, if we're being completely rational, we can't say, yeah, it's something to be feared. Um, but Socrates does know that it is something to be feared. And he says, really what we need to give greater weight to are these things over here. And you notice I've got two different classes of things. So one of the points that he makes is he says, I don't know if death is a bad thing. I do know that this is a bad thing for me to do bad things. 
And, you know, for example, when I was stationed as a soldier in, in the Athenian army defending the city at this battle or that battle, I knew that it was right for me to stay at my post and to fight and to, to take, you know, the chance of getting killed. I knew that it would be wrong for me to throw away my shield and take off for home. Um, it's wrong to lie. It's wrong to um, deceive people. It's wrong to, you know, commit violence against them. It's wrong to damage people in such ways that you make them worse off morally. Socrates has quite a few things that he thinks are right and things that are, are wrong. And doing philosophy, he says, look, this, this lifestyle that I have is actually a obligation that I've got on me that is a divine mission. I've got a, you know, um, discussion about that in another core concept. And it's also a benefit to you guys, the Athenians. I'm actually a great benefactor to you by, by doing this because I'm calling your attention to what really matters, your souls. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. I would be doing wrong if I were to say, um, just to save my life, I'm going to stop doing that. I would be abandoning my post, and I know that that's wrong. So that, therefore, that has to have greater weight. We could say the same thing if, if he was put in a situation where if he thought that lying was just, you know, simply wrong, um, where he's being compelled to lie or, or lose his life, Socrates could, by the same sort of argument or same sort of logic, say, um, I don't know whether it's a bad thing to lose my life. I do know that it's a bad thing, a very bad thing to lie, so I'm going to accept losing my life. Now, there are other penalties that are possible. So this is the second thing here. There are other penalties that are possible for him that he could have actually accepted or suggested. He does actually, in the end, suggest a fine. After, of course, telling them, really, you know, what I do deserve is free room and board from the Athenian people the rest of my life. But he's kind of joking around with that. Exile. Why would exile be a bad thing? Isn't it the opportunity to travel? Well, you know, Socrates says, look, I'm an old man. Um, my roots are here in this community. Uh, if, if they're not willing to let me do philosophy here in Athens, they're probably not going to be too keen on me doing it in, in Sparta or Colophon or Thebes or pick wherever else you want. So I'm not going to be able to do what I need to do. You notice there's sort of a connection between those things. Prison. Um, he says, that's not the way I want to live the rest of my life. Prison is indeed an evil. And I would like to be able to come and go and do the sorts of things that I've been doing for the last, you know, decades in, in the city of Athens. Uh, that would definitely be a bad thing. Paying a fine, he says, well, you know, that's basically the same thing as prison anyway because I don't have any money. So if you want me to pay a fine, I'm not going to be able to... Uh, to pay it and I'll have to sit in, in prison until I die or somebody comes up with the, the ransom. So these are things that he says are worth avoiding even at the cost of death. Because we know that these are bad things. Let's now turn to this, this issue of well, what is death? We don't know whether it's a good or bad thing unless we actually know what death is. And Socrates at this point is saying, we don't know what, what death is, but he is willing to speculate a bit. So he says, look, it could be one of two things. And th the first one is actually two things by itself, in a way, if you sort of parse it out. Um, but he doesn't really believe that one anyway. He's just preferring that to the jury saying, if you buy this sort of idea about death, then, you know, don't grieve for me. Maybe it's annihilation. Maybe it's the total cessation of one's life. Maybe there's nothing of oneself after one dies. Maybe the body is all there is. Um, this is very much along the lines of the view of the Epicureans, who are going to come a little bit later. Um, and, you know, there's many other people who have made similar arguments. If that's the case, if death is just annihilation, then there's no you who is being harmed or for whom it's a bad thing when the death actually happens. It's kind of a non-event. It's a all the events of your life coming to an end and, and no longer existing. 
Um, or it could be, he talks about, it may, imagine the best night's sleep that you ever had, totally restful, you didn't wake up, um, didn't even dream anything. Maybe it's just like that for all eternity. And there, there'd still be something existing, but it's in this, this essentially comatose state, and never does anything, never thinks anything. Um, it's not really that far away from annihilation, but it is something different from it. He says the same thing holds for that. You know, if that's the case, then you're, you don't have anything to be concerned about afterwards, right? Nobody's going to wake you up. You're not going to have uh, indigestion in the middle of the night. You're not going to have a bad dream that, you know, you get caught in and can't get out of. Um, so in that case, death would actually be a good thing. Or at least not a bad thing. Then he says, maybe it's a change of place. Now, here a lot more could be said about the relationship of Plato's views of the afterlife in relation to sort of the mishmash of traditional Greek conceptions of the afterlife that we get in the poets and the plays and, you know, Greek religion as it was practiced. But they, they did have a conception of the afterlife as a place where um, judgment would take place and the fate of a person would be, you know, decided according to some sort of criteria and you might go to a good place, you might go to a bad place. It really depends on which poet you're, you're reading. Um, if it's Homer, of course, better to be a you know, poor laborer alive than to be the king of the dead, is what Achilles says uh, down in Hades to Odysseus when he goes down there. So that's not quite so, so nice. Um, but the way that Socrates frames it is... Let's say the, the traditional Greek religion is actually on track. And remember, he's addressing a jury that, that isn't all Platonists, so they don't all believe in this you know, endless you know, migration of souls, only you know, ceasing when you finally get off the, the thing through being purified, the way that he talks about in the Phaedo later on. Instead, they think of it as going somewhere, being judged, and now he says, I'll die here, and these are bad judges who are actually judging me. But there, I'm going to have true judges. I'm going to get vindicated. I'm going to be judged by Minos and Radmanthos and, you know, maybe the gods, who knows. These are these legendary, incorruptible judges in the underworld. Even more interesting, he says, you know what? There's one thing that they won't be able to do in the afterlife that they can do here. And that's to kill me to shut me up. Because I'll get to go, you know, I, this entire life that I've been here, I've been, you know, asking what is virtue, who actually has virtue, who's got wisdom. I've been cross-examining people. Now, I'll get to do it with the dead. So if Homer's down there, instead of asking, you know, Homer scholars or rhapsodes, you know, what did Homer mean by this, or thinking about it by myself, I can go up to the guy and ask him myself and, and you know, I can get, get a hold of him and not let go until he's fully answered all of my questions. If I want to know about Achilles, well, he'll be down there too. I can go and, and chat with him. You get this image of Socrates buttonholing people and just being kind of a general pest in the underworld um, for these, these dead uh, who, who preceded him. And probably all the ones that would come afterwards too. Oh, you're here? Maybe you're wise. Let me talk with you. But that's the way that he presents it. And if that's the case, then death is actually a good thing if you're a good person. If you're a bad person, then, you know, these incorruptible judges, uh, you may have gotten by by bribing judges in this life or, you know, finding some evidence on them and blackmailing them, but you're not going to do that with these guys. And the other dead probably aren't going to like you if you're kind of a, a schmuck. Um, maybe even the other dead who are bad people won't like you either. Um, here we're getting very speculative. In any case, Socrates is saying death is not a bad thing. First off, we don't know whether it's a good thing or bad thing. And then second, if we start making assumptions about it, uh, it starts to look like it's a good thing. Third, we know that there are some bad things that are worth taking into consideration that we ought to avoid rather than trying to avoid death. 